Hello everyone and, uh, and welcome. Today we're gonna tie a flat wing sand eel. This is my all time favorite way of, of tying a, a flat wing, of tying a sand eel. This is, a, this is a fly that's called the Janus sand eel, basically because one of my friends, uh, in, at least that to my knowledge, invented this way of, of tying a flat wing. It's fairly easy, it's, it's light to cast, and it looks absolutely amazingly in the water and it fishes, it just fishes and performs really, really well. So, an easy way of tying a, a sand eel pattern um, that, that works perfectly both for, for the sea trouts or for sea bass or, or for whatever species you, you want to target in, uh, that, that, that eats, that eats uh, bait fish. This is a way you can do it. Um, and it's fast, it's, it's easy and it just, it just works and works and works and works. So here goes, tying the Janus sand eel. Enjoy! Hello there everyone! Today we're going to tie one of these. This is a flat wing, but it's a bit uh, a typical flat wing because it's uh, it's it's designed, uh, I would say, uh, ideally in order to to give it as um, as as much a, prof a profile that is as transparent as possible. But also the feathers are only are only tied in at, at the at the beginning at, at way way back in the on on the hook, so so you won't get as many tangles. Uh, with the with the flat wing feathers as as normally. Um, uh, we're gonna use uh, 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 Varivas hook for for this one. Uh, these Variva hooks are insanely insanely sharp, and uh, and really really some of the best hooks for for things like this. Also, they have a very big uh, hook, a very wide hook gape, which makes them ideal for 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 hooking uh, uh, even larger uh, predatory fish. And, and they're very strong, and, and the tip is is really really sharp. So so I like these. Uh, this is the the 2600 STV uh, Varivas hook. One of uh, one of the coolest hooks for for sea trout uh, I ever tried. So basically, I just uh, I'm, I'm going to use a, a white uh, a white tying thread, and uh, and I've tied all the way down to approximately where the the barb is. Um, and that's that's where we start off. And the first thing we need for for, for a fly like this, we need uh, some bucktail in two different colors. Then we need some uh, some saddle feathers, uh, also in two different colors. A bit of flesh, a bit of dubbing, and then uh, either a flyman fish skull head, or or a head made from uh, from uh, from UV glue. And we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do both in in in, in this video. So the first thing is uh, to to ensure or to help stabilize the fly and to help um, um, uh, ensure that the fly that the, the the flat wing feathers do not tangle or tangle as little as possible I start by uh, by tying down a very small amount of uh, of bucktail in white again uh, one of the, the the key elements about this fly is is we want a fly that is that is is fairly lightly dressed because basically a, a flat wing as uh, no a sand eel is 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 designed <laughs> by nature to be as inconspicuous as possible so so if if you make flies that are too bulky and and uh, and too uh, and too densely dressed, you you will you will not get a a, a fly that fishes as well as as you know something that that resembles the the actual bait fish more, and and the fish will have no uh, no problem seeing this. So basically, I, I just tied in just on top of the hook a small bundle of uh, of bucktail. We're gonna cut away this, and now we need the the flat wings. Uh, and and for for a fly like this, you can either buy uh, full full saddles. Um, uh, I use the dry fly saddles for this. Or uh, in my shop, I have some uh, some selected bags that is f f not of course not as expensive as as the full as the full saddle because we basically just take some kiok or or whatever we have and uh, and just pull them apart and and then select the feathers into into these bags. Um, so if if you if you if you don't think you're gonna tie maybe a million flat wings, uh, then then perhaps this this option where you can buy you know a selected a selected few feathers uh, is is the is the correct option for you. Uh, basically, these feathers are so long that one feather you can use for more than uh, more than one uh, more than one fly. So I, I take the tip of one of these, and then I tie it here on the side, like so. 
So I have the, the feather, and of course, depending on how long you want your flat wing, how long you want your, your, your imitation, you can, you can vary the, the size of that. But you see, now I have the rest of, of this feather here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut it so it, it gets a point. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm cutting diagonally. So it gets a, a tip again. And, uh, and with that done, I can easily use this for the other side. So, so, so I, I can I use a, a lot more of the actual feathers than just the tip, because otherwise this fly would be really, really, really expensive. So I make the other ones a bit longer or a bit shorter. It's, it's just important that it is not the same length as the first one, so it will, it will move differently. Tie this down here. So now I have my two flat wing feathers that are uh, uneven in length. I have the bucktail in between or, or to just basically to, to support them. And now I'm going to take a bit of flesh to, to, to add to, to this. Uh, and I'm going to take some, uh, some mirage flesh. No, not mirage, sorry. Some ascent flesh. Some, some of you might know that as, as crystal flesh. But uh, it, it has a nice shine to it and it's going to look a lot like the, the sideline of the fly. And it's going to draw a lot of attention attention to the fly here um, and that's well basically the point so maybe three strands of, of, of this you can you can vary that depending on the the size of the fly and if you're fishing for striped bass with a fly like this of course you're probably gonna tie quite uh, quite tied quite a lot bigger this is a size six but you can you can easily do this in in, in a lot bigger size um, and, and some of the sand eels are quite big, so, so I could even, I, I, I carry more than, than basically one size in, in my fly box. I have some that is really small and, and some that is fairly large. So now we need to attach the final, uh, the final flat wing feather. And for this I'm going to go with chartreuse, because chartreuse looks uh, really nice. It's, it's, also, um, it's also very, uh, very fluorescent. So uh, for some reason uh, that is is really working well for for me on uh, on uh, for fishing for for sea trout. So I'm gonna go with a with a, a complete chartreuse. But if you have a grizzly chartreuse or or you know uh, uh, an an olive would be nice as well, or or even you know a dark olive or or whatever color you have that that fits the scheme of of the sand eel, then that's that's nice as well. But the chartreuse here really really looks well, I think. I'm going to add that. And that's basically the tail. And this is going to be the tail that really, really will move a lot and very erratic in the water. I made the chartreuse one the, the longest one of these. I'm only going to use three because if I use any more, then the fly here is going to be too bulky and too... Um, too um, yeah, simply too bulky and not, not, look, not look like the actual thing. Okay, so here you have to decide, because if you're gonna tie it with the um, if you're gonna tie it with the UV glue head, you don't need any uh, you don't need any weight. But if you're gonna use the fishman, the the the, the flyman fish skull, then probably add some uh, some weight to uh, to to the body here before you actually make the body uh, is is gonna be a good option. Also, depending on if you're fishing with a floating line or an intermediate line, that has quite a lot to say regarding this as well. Because this fly fish is the absolute best if you fish it fast. If you strip it really fast, I, I normally have the rod under my arm and then strip with both my hands with a lot of stops to, to give this as much light as life and, and as much speed as possible. That's something that the fish really, the sea trout really, really likes is speed because they're basically hunters. So, so they like to hunt, and uh, and if you give them that, they will they will grab the fly, and 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 uh, the faster you fish this, the the more likely it is that the the fish will will grab the fly really really hard, um, and uh, and and that's why it's it's often not a problem that that you have a fairly long fly, um, but where the hook is located very very far in front, and uh, because the the fish will grab this so so uh, so ferociously and, and and so violently, it 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 it's it's seldom to have you know fish that that doesn't that doesn't hit the hook or if it they doesn't if, if they do not hit the hook then often they will they will charge it again and then and then hook themselves so 
So that's that's nice. Uh, I'm gonna make a small body here of, of dubbing. I'm gonna use some some semi seal uh, true steel dubbing from uh, from Spawn. And the reason why I use this is they have mixed some very nice uh, very nice fluorescent fibers in here as well. So 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 that's gonna that's gonna give a, a nice uh, nice body and and again some nice fluorescent effect here. Uh, some of a lot of people call that UV, but basically it's it's yeah. It's it's the things that that shines when you when you shine the UV light on it, that that gives the effect when when you use uh, the the UV light on it. That's that's the thing that is in here. So like this, and if you noticed, I'm not going to tie completely up at the eye. I'm tying on top of some of the uh, some of the dubbing very close to the eye, and that is because if I tie it uh, just at the eye, then when I when I'm going to tie down the, the the next bundle of bucktail, then it's going to be really really just sticking straight out into the air, and that's not what we're going for. We want this uh, this this bucktail to be uh, to be. Um, to be on the on the body, but but be be around the body and not be be you know like this. It's it's gonna go all the way around here, but it's gonna it's gonna have to kind of of enfold the entire pattern here. So a small bundle of bucktail. Again, this is this is just to give it give it a bit more give it a bit more bulk and a bit more uh, volume, but not make it uh, make it too dense and, and too too voluminous and too not transparent. You want this to be as transparent as possible, because basically that's that's how the fish looks out in the out in the water. Right there we go. Then we're going to take a bundle of the, the chartreuse. <laughs> this has been... I have been using this for quite some time, so there's not as many good long hairs on this as, as there used to be. I should probably f go get another one, but I think I managed to find some that's that's usable. Again, careful not to use too much material. Too much material is is the most is the most common thing that that ruins any 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 nice nice pattern. Of course, this is not going to go all the way around. This is just going to be on top here. If you can get it a bit on the sides then as well, then that's okay. But it's not going to go. It's not gonna go underneath. I almost cut some of the tying thread there. It was a potential disaster, but I s <laughs> managed to save it, I think. So, basically there you have it. Now I'm gonna finish this off with a whip finish. And of course you can use it as it is now. That would probably work very, very well. But if you want this to, to, to look a bit more like the actual thing, then there's two different options. And the first option is to take one of these Flyman fish skulls. And basically if you just add one of those there, of course uh, you need to, to glue the eye. There's a groove in, the, in this eye, so, so, so you need some glue in there and also uh, some glue on top of the head here, but if you if you do like this and you had you had add some added some glue, then then your fly would be finished and and you would have really really well looking well fishing uh, sand eel now, sand eel pattern. But um, if you do it like this, then it's it would be a good idea for you to have actually added some weight, as I said to to the fly, because uh, some weight inside the fly here would 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 have made this this fish better because because of the the head here can contain a small amount of air and and stuff like that. The other option, and that's what we're gonna do now, is to use some uh, UV glue and and compose a UV glue head. And to do that, you of course need your UV glue, and you need you need your eyes. And the, and the first thing you, you 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 need to do is is to put your fly so you can you can you can basically add the eyes first. 
I'm going to hold everything back here. And I'm going to add a small amount of UV glue here on one side first. To have something that my, my, uh, my eye can rest on, can be attached to. Then I'm going to place my eye. So basically there I have it. And it's now on top of the UV glue. Now I need my UV light to work. Come on, God damn it. <laughs> and there we go. Then I added the UV glue. And you can, you can of course uh, manipulate this as much as, as you like. Now I'm going to do it on exactly the same, uh, the same thing on the other side. What's important to note here is that you have as clean, as clean a head as possible. I had a bit of things from the dubbing here that I'm going to cut off. And, uh, and, and also that you take care to place the eyes in the same position on both sides, so, so you get a, an even looking fly. So I add a, a bit of glue here on the, on the opposite side of the first eye. Then I add my second eye. And this, this, this very small three millimeter eye is of course not as easy to place as, as something that is perhaps a bit bigger. And now I'm going to look at the fly from the front and I'm going to notice I'm going to place the eye so that both of them align. Before shining the UV light. There we go. Gonna add some UV glue on top of the fly here. Prefer preferably without all the air bubbles. And then I look from the front here to really see if, if it is even on both sides. And the trick, as I said, the trick here is you can you can do this for quite a long time. But the, 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 the thing to remember here is is to add a small amount of glue, then use the light, then add a small amount of glue, then use the light until you have the process down and you're you're completely certain of what you're doing. Then of course you can gradually use more and more glue every single time. Um, but but the trick is to use a small amount of glue, a small amount of glue, a small amount of glue. Uh, and and that's the, that's the that's the safest way to make uh, you know the 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 get the best result with the, with the head of the fly. That looks really good. So. And basically uh, now all there's left is just to, to clean up and to, uh, to, to, to finish the head here to make it, make it even better. But, but it, is, it is completely uniform in the front now and I just need to add more glue and add a bit more glue and add a bit more glue. And, uh, but, but here you have a very, very light, very easy to cast uh, uh, sand eel imitation that really is insanely has a lot of life in the water uh, and fishes fishes really well it's not that difficult to tie uh, it's it's relatively fast and of course you can you can you can replace any of the colors with colors that you like for let's say bay anchovy or 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 whatever whatever bait fish you like in 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 in, in that is around in, in your area if you're fishing with sardinas and stuff like that uh, maybe in mexico or, or whatever you can basically you can basically use the same the same pattern here just just change up the colors 
perhaps use a bit more bulk on the body and, and stuff like that but but to have the uh, the feathers down there in the tail is really really an awesome way of doing it because uh, they will not tangle as much and uh, and and they will swim really 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 well so there it is. Basically what I was saying is, this is uh, the finished fly, this is the, J the Janus sand eel, because the, 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 the technique with, with having the, the flat wings only in the tail is something I first saw from him. Uh, he's a really cool, cool uh, fly tire, he does a lot of great, great stuff. Um, so, so I've dubbed it, when I saw this in his box, I said, you, you, that fly has to be named Janus, the Janus sand eel. So it was, because he hadn't given it a name. And um, well, basically, as always, um, if you if you like the video, please leave a comment. Um, if you have any any takes on on what I should do in the future or or, or regarding the way I tie this, then also leave a comment for that. Uh, otherwise, you can find the full and complete material kit for for this fly and numerous others um, on uh, on my web shop. That's called NordicAnglers.com. Uh, we have a lot of <laughs> yeah, more than 12,000 products in stock and uh, and the last thing is if you if you enjoyed this video please 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 subscribe to the channel and uh, and uh, we will do our best to to continue providing you with uh, with content like this thank you for watching and uh, good luck out on the water